Hello, I'm going to be telling you how to play Xenoblade Chronicles for the Wii, 3DS, and Nintendo Switch, but this is mostly going to be focusing on the Switch version. Because this is a giant game and you're going to want a tutorial for it. Basically, I'll be covering how to use each character in battle, how to actually play in battle, and how to play outside of battle, and how that and how the two correlate. So, of course, I'm going to be starting with how to use each character, because you're never going to get anywhere without knowing that. I like to support... I like to... Bleh. I like to divide them between three types, attack, tank, and support types, but the lines between them are so blurred that oftentimes it doesn't really matter. Shulk, the main character, obviously, he's an attack type to me, because he doesn't want to be targeted, because he's going to be in the back doing more and more damage. His talent art is called Activate Monado, which basically sets him up to do more Monado arts. Monado... His Monado arts, uh... They're mostly used to buff or protect the allies, unless you have balls big enough to use Monado Buster, but oftentimes that's not the best idea. Mono Some things you should know. Monado Speed only works on physical attacks, which I'll get to later with the red. And Shield only works on Talent Arts, which I'll also get to later with the Gray. Stream Edge fills the Talent Gauge more for each enemy you hit, so that lets you use more and more Monado Arts quicker. A good combo I like to do is Shadow Eye into Slit Edge into Backslash. Shadow Eye, it lowers your aggro, keeps the enemy off you, and it raises your Physical Arts, aka Slit Edge and Backslash. Slit Edge, if you hit it from the side, which you can do with the enemy off you thanks to Shadow Eye, um, lowers their physical defense, and then Backslash is a really strong attack if you hit it from the back. So Backslash plus the Physical Arts plus with Shadow Eye and, and the enemy debuffed with Slit Edge means a huge Backslash. And last thing, don't use Battle Soul. It's terrible. It takes out half of Shulk's health just to raise the uh, talent gauge by a little bit. It's not worth it in the slightest. And on top of that, you're going to want to dequip it, so then the AI doesn't use it. Because the AI, the AI will use it and completely screw you over. Ryan, <clears throat> he's a tank type in my opinion. He's unga bunga, look at me! <laughs> but seriously, his goal is to get the enemy to target him so then everyone else can do their thing more efficiently. If you're playing as him, I would start battles with Hammerbeat, his art Hammerbeat, which draws more aggro to him right off the bat. His talent art is called Mad Taunt, which draws more aggro to him. War Swing fills your talent gauge quicker, so then you can use more Mad Taunts, so you can get more aggro onto him. <laughs> Sword Drive hits really, really hard. So I'd probably want to add that on as well, especially when you're using a chain attack, which, again, I'll get to later. Sharla, I'd say, is 100% a support type. She doesn't want to be targeted because she's in the back trying to heal and buff everyone. If you're playing as Sharla, I would give your tank shield bullet or heal counter as they're approaching the enemy, so then they start off the battle in a pretty safe spot. Her talent art, if you can even call it that, is called Cool Off. Her deal is, if you use too many arts, then her rifle is going to overheat, and her talent art is when she cools it off. Basically, it's a couple seconds in which you can't move, and she actually regenerates a tiny bit of health, but nothing too significant. It's essentially a nerf, really. Using arts will raise her talent gauge, but auto attacks won't. Dunban works similarly to Rhyn, as in he's a tank, except he focuses on evasion rather than rather than sheer taking the hits. So you're going to want to stack him with agility with light equipment and agility gems. Gale Slash is your best friend. It's a wonderful combo starter. And if I'm not mistaken, like three or four arts work, uh, have sweet spots after Gale Slash. His talent art is called Blossom Dance. It's a four hit combo best used in long in longer chain attacks because on its own it's not all that great but with the damage buffs you get from chain attacks it's insane i'll get to that later like i said 
Soaring Tempest, his art Soaring Tempest works, works similarly to Ryan's War Swing, in which it hits, the more enemies it hits, the more it raises the talent gauge, letting you use more Blossom Dances. His one last art I want to talk about, Binding Blossom, it tells the enemy that Dunpan is cooler than whoever they're targeting. It draws aggro from whoever it is you want to draw aggro from and gives it to Dunban. So it essentially it is, it gets the enemy's attention off of that person and onto Dunban. This is where the lines start getting a little blurred between the types I was mentioning. I'd say she's a support? Her, her deal is she summons elementals, like earth, fire, ice, etc., to buff the party, and then she can shoot them at the enemy to deal ether or magic damage. That's her talent art, shooting the elements. It's called Elemental Discharge. Now, Melly is weird because the more you use her talent art, the more the talent gauge fills. And when it's completely full, it you get a super mode called Element Burst for a few seconds, maybe a minute if you're lucky. <clears throat> and the thing about Element Burst, it lets you use two arts to begin with, uh, called Mind Blast and Burst End. Mind Blast inflicts Aura... No, not Aura Seal. Um, arts Seal, which lets the enemy not use any arts except Talon Arts, which is very good. And Burst End, which lowers both physical and ether defense. Ether is magic. Which is also very good. And whatever elementals you discharge do more damage and have a greater effect in general, while you're in Element Burst. Ricky is an everything type, <laughs> to me. His deal is you're going to want to apply all these debuffs to the enemy to slowly burn them down. Stuff like poison, burn, uh, chill, etc. <coughs> Sorry. Um, his talent art is called Yoink. It's not very good, like, on its own, but if you're grinding for rare items, that's when it's really shining. Especially with, with his skills that make the enemies drop silver silver or golden chests, which also give you better items. His main debuffing tools would be Lurgy, Freezenate, and Burninate. But Say Sorry, um, the way Say Sorry works is the more debuffs that are on an enemy, the more damage it does. However, it takes all the debuffs off, so you're going to have to reapply them. It's super good for finishing off enemies. It's, it does so much damage if you have lots of debuffs applied. And one thing I didn't put on the PowerPoint that you'd want to know is he has so much HP, which is why I say he's part tank type, and a really good healing art called You Can Do It, which is why I'd say support type. And another thing I didn't put on the PowerPoint is, an, is another art he has called Happy Happy, which raises the party gauge, which I'll get to later, and how important that is. Seven is, I'd say, an IDK lull type, because you build this person as you, uh, with the equipment you put on them. So that makes them very flexible. Their talent art, even their talent art depends on what equipment you put on them. I personally make them a huge attacker, though. Their art Air Fang applies break really quickly and consistently, and Double Blade and Spear Blade do lots more damage on top of that. Their art Magstorm is really good for where you are in the game when you get them, but it kind of sucks later on. You're going to want to switch to another art called Cross Impact if you don't already have both equipped. So finally we're going to talk about how to actually play in battle. So to do an auto attack, you just stand near them. You just stand near them. <laughs> and the more auto attacks you do, the more your talent gauge in the center here fills up and they can crit and miss. And uh, you can get a certain gem called Haste to make you do auto attacks quicker, just in case you wanted to know. <laughs> so another important thing is to hit arts in their sweet spots, represented by this blue exclamation mark. For example, you're going to want to hit Slit Edge on the side, that's its sweet spot, Backslash on the back, that's its sweet that's its sweet spot. Gonna have cancer trying to say all this. <laughs> and 
some sweet spots are, could be after an after a certain art is used, like Melia has Spear Break into Starlight Kick, and Starlight Kick forces Topple after Spear Break, which I'll get to later. So, if you're using Shulk, for example, you're going to want to focus on which party member has the red circle around them to see who's being targeted and which way they're facing and which way the enemy's facing so you know what part of them is actually the side. And if you're playing Definitive Edition, like I mentioned, you get these blue exclamation marks to help you out too. Finally, I'll talk about Break, Topple, and Daze. Break prepares your enemy for topple, represented by the pink lines here. Topple means that they can't play the game because they've fallen down. <laughs> and, they, and they can't do anything till they stand back up. And Daze does a lot of wonderful things. It extends the length of topple, meaning they can't play the game longer. It makes crits easier to land, and it changes what arts they're going to be using in Visions, which I'll get later on. Uh, some good break arts you're going to want equipped are um, any of Shulk's break arts, like um, like uh, Stream Edge and Air Slash, um, Sharla's Metal Blast, Dunban's Electric Gut Buster, which only works after Gale Slash, like I said, it's really good, Ricky's Tar Tantrum, and Seven's Air Fang. Your best topple arts are Ryan's Wild Down and Dunban's Steel Strike. And good day's arts would be Ryan's Shield Bash, which he does instantly. He does it so quickly. Sharla's Head Shaker into Headshot, which could potentially insta-kill. And Seven's Cross Impact or Mag Storm. Also, one last thing you should know. Using a break art while an enemy is already broken will increase the break time. And that's the same with Topple and Days. Now we'll talk about visions. In case you didn't know, Shulk can see the future, believe it or not. <laughs> so, with visions, you're gonna see this, these three rectangles, these two rectangles, I can speak. <clears throat> the first rectangle is gonna have the enemy and the name of, it, of the art it's gonna use. In this case, I was fighting a regular enemy, so he doesn't get a special picture. And this is the name of the art he was using, Virgin Bite 7. If this art was in a red text, it would be a physical art, and if it was purple, it would be an ether art. But since it's gray, it's it's a talon art, meaning you'd want to use Monado Shield on it. So some solutions to solve this are draw aggro to someone else who has more HP. In this situation, it wouldn't be a good idea because Ryan is Ryan has a lot of HP, but he'd still die anyway, as represented by this skull. <clears throat> You could heal or buff someone so they can withstand the attack. Say, I could use Monado Shield, and that would make him take only one damage instead of 7,589. Or you can warn an ally to use an art, which will use one block of the party gauge. You can also topple them to delay the art more, which is good in case if they have really low HP and you're about to kill them. Or you can daze them to make them change which art they'll use. Say, if, if you know an enemy has an art that's going to do sh shit tons of damage, you can daze them, and then they'll do an art that'll do less damage, or have a different effect, a better effect. Tension is something I recently learned about. It's not really well explained to me. Um, there are five levels of tension. Very low, low, normal, high, and very high, which is marked by their facial expressions and the background of the health gauge. Very low, you'll see them, their head is down and they'll have a very, a very purplish background, and they won't really be hitting anything around that time, so you're gonna wanna encourage them pretty quick. Low, low is represented um, <clears throat> by just their head down. Normal is how you'd, uh, how you'd often start a battle. High shows them yelling, and very high shows them yelling with a fiery background. And all are very important. Uh, QTEs, or quick time events, using B will appear when someone crits, misses, or dodges any attack to encourage allies. And you're gonna, and you're gonna see 
a big circle going into a little circle, and you're gonna want to hit the big circle on the little on the edge of the little circle. It, it makes more sense when you when you're actually playing the game. So tension in general affects hit rate and crit rate, and in fact, some arts can only be used at high tension, such as Ricky's Happy Happy and Seven's Final Cross. Um, the party gauge is up in the left here. <clears throat> so to increase that, what you're going to want to do is hit an arts sweet spot, succeed one of the QTEs I was talking about, um, auto attack while your tension is high, like when they're screaming like that, uh, defeat an enemy with a chain attack, that feel that fills one block, uh, you get a crit, you use happy happy, or, or you use happy happy. When it's full, you can do chain attacks. Chain attacks, um, to use them, you're going to want to scroll to your talent art and then hit the up arrow and, and then A, which will activate it. So in a chain attack, each party member takes turns using an art. Using the same color art, whether it be red, pink, yellow, green, uh, using using the same color art continuously does more and more damage. <clears throat> and talent arts count as any color, so you could so you could transition from one color to another. Say you start with um, Shulk's uh, Shulk's air slash to do break, and Charlotte could do metal blast to also do break, then Dunban could use uh, Blossom Dance, and then Shulk would be able to use any other color art, and it would still get the same damage buff as it would usually. Now I'm going to talk about outside of battle. AP, XP, AP, and SP are three different things you can gain. XP affects your level and overall strength, AP lets you level up your arts, and uh, SP gets you more skills. Side quests, they're huge. There are like over 400 side quests in the game. Uh, they're represented on your mini-map with a white exclamation mark, and whatever target you have is represented by a red exclamation mark. Or if you have it set as an active quest, a blue exclamation mark. You can hit ZR and change the page to show your uh, current active side quest, which would actually leave a little blue path leading to your uh, active side quest target. If there's a stopwatch by the quest in the quest log, that means that it can be removed if the story goes too far, so you might want to get it done quick if you really want to see its ending. Some quests require night or day, require it to be night or day, or require it to be uh, that you have talked to a certain NPC, which are represented by green dots. So now I'm going to talk about affinity. <clears throat> affinity is basically how much your party likes one another. Uh, it's raised by succeeding uh, quick time events together, accepting or finishing side quests together, doing heart to heart, heart to hearts, bleh, <laughs> uh, activating chain attacks together or giving presents, and it's represented by these five smiley faces. Affinity is very important because it lets you continue your chain attacks, it lets you... Uh, I'll get more on that later, actually. Uh, general affinity is basically your reputation with, with each town. And, and with the affinity chart you can also see how much each um, citizen likes one another. See, this person is colleagues with this person. And it's a scale of five stars. Uh, and it grows more by talking to unique citizens, uh, which are represented by the green dots, like I mentioned, or by doing side quests. The more affinity an area has for you, the more side quests they'll give, and in turn, the more rewards you'll get. Some great items require you to get at least two or three stars, and you'll get tons of experience for it. Skills are very important. Each character starts with three skill trees. 
For example, Ryan gets an Enthusiasm skill tree, a Spirit skill tree, or a Diligence skill tree. SP, like I mentioned earlier, uh, unlocks more skills, and it's usually gained alongside XP and AP. When you finish one tree, when you finish one tree that you've prioritized, uh, hence the yellow outline here, you can switch to another tree, and you'll keep all the skills from the first tree. And each character gets two extra skill trees acquired via side quests. I'm not going to tell you how, because that's kind of a pain. <laughs> skill links let you take one character's side quest, side quest, skills, <laughs> and put them on another character. For example, Shulk can take some of Ryan's skills or some of Sharla's skills. Or each character can take any other character's skills, but this is just the example I'm giving. They cost affinity coins, which you get by leveling up or by de defeating unique enemies. And the price of the price of coins that co each skill costs depends on the skill. And the amount of skills one character can take from another depends on their affinity level. So if they're at the pink heart, then they can have uh, five skills. But if they're at the if they're at the yellow smiley face, then one skill. This is where you're really going to want to be creative. See what skills that are on other characters work on other characters. Probably one of my favorite parts of the game. Gem crafting is a pain to explain, but I'll give it my best shot. <clears throat> you do it at Colony 9 at the Gem Man stall, or if you get Colony 6 up to level 1, you can do it anywhere. What you're, wanting to, what you're going to want to do is pick crystals with the same abilities if you want really strong gems, or differing abilities if you want lots of cylinders, cylinders to later make strong gems. For example, here, this player got a few different skills, and, and uh, these three are going to be made into cylinders, while this is going to be made into a gem because it's over 100%. If a crystal goes above 200%, then it goes, then it becomes upgraded one level. I may do a more in-depth video about this later, but I don't know. I still have to figure it out more myself. That's, this is just a, a very basic guide. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, I'll try and be active in the comments and answer them. But as of right now, that's it. Thank you for watching.